Hello, this is Albert van Dijk, and um, this little video explains the basics of radar remote sensing. How does it work? Well, um, let's have a look at a few different types of radar. Um, basically, um, uh, you've got imaging radar and you've got radar altimeters. Now, a radar altimeter is very similar in the way that it operates to LIDAR, which we looked at in a previous um, uh, uh, video. And so, uh, here's an example, a diagram. Of, uh, of how the radar altimeter works. Basically, the satellite sends out, uh, and this could be airborne by the way, uh, but in this case it's a satellite, sends out a radar signal, so a microwave pulse, much like LIDAR sends out uh, an optical or near infrared uh, laser pulse, uh, and then it measures with its antenna how much of that comes back and when. And so that's what you see here. You see here the waveform, much like we've got a waveform in LIDAR, uh, also, radar also produces a waveform. And depending on what you're interested in, typically you'll be looking at uh, the, uh, the the surface. So in this case, for instance, sea level. So we're going to look at where uh, can we uh, recognize the, uh, the the sea level return, and that might be here, uh, most likely, because this is where the first signals start to come back, and then some of it appears to um, uh, you know, penetrate the water a little bit and then come back. But obviously, this is where the big peak is. Um, and then as you go over land, you might get, get a bit more complicated uh, returns uh, because of the features that you might find on land. So that's a laser altimeter, kind of quite simple compared to radar images, which are a little bit more complicated to, to interpret. So in this case, we don't get a point return, but we actually get an image. And there's two ways of doing that. Uh, uh, and you'll come across these terms. You might, uh, might come across the term real aperture radar, but probably you'll come across the term synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, uh, quite a lot. Now, what is SAR? Well, it's a bit complicated to explain, and, and it's sort of for stuff for, of engineering. Uh, but essentially, what the synthetic stands for is the fact that because your platform moves at, at a certain speed, um, essentially the uh, the uh, your antenna or your the, the the length over which you are measuring returns from the surf surfaces increase. So the the synthetic refers to the fact that because of your forward speed, uh, your your uh, your resembling a, a longer antenna uh, than you would if you were not moving, if you were stationary. So that means, for instance, at, at this point, a pulse is uh, emitted from the airplane and the ship is in it. Uh, but you know, as the plane moves forward, the ship is still within the uh, in the beam and and keeps providing a signal. And uh, we can process that and turn that into uh, an image if we're also looking sideways, of course. And and that's the principle, uh, or, or the meaning at least, of the word synthetic aperture. So here's just another way of looking at the same. Now, the typical thing of imaging radar is that it will look sideways, and there are reasons for that. Um, but uh, uh, that creates some complications as well, uh, as uh, as we'll see later on. But essentially, again, the uh, the idea is that there's a particular look angle, uh, typically in the order of uh, 50 degrees or so. Uh, the signal gets emitted, uh, and then gets measured back at the antenna. A little bit on the geometry of radar. So we talked about the look angle, the angle here. We talked about the uh, the incidence angle, which is the complement of that. So the angle between uh, the surface and the and the uh, emitted pulse. Uh, the radar swath, which is basically uh, the, uh, the, dis the 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 uh, as with optical remote sensing, for instance, the, the width of the area over which it is uh, is measuring. And as you can see, it doesn't measure straight under the satellite. It only measures at an angle. From the satellite, and then this diagram here shows some of those terms uh, in uh, in cross section. So um, radar also operates in the microwave uh, domain in, of the electromagnetic spectrum. So obviously, it's got some similarities with passive microwave remote sensing as well. Um, of course, the main difference being that in this case, we're emitting a, a microwave. Uh, uh, signal and measuring how much of it comes back. Um, but there are also some other important differences because of that. So, uh, for instance, radar is much more sensitive to the roughness of the surface, and, and, and the roughness in this case meaning the, uh, the, uh, the, the unevenness of the surface in the order of magnitude of the emitted uh, radiation. So that's in the order of centimeters. So ra you'll find that radar is quite sensitive to um, to whether the you know whether the ground is a smooth surface or or a, a, a somewhat rough uh, 
uh, sort of sandy or rocky or or, or, or smooth water surface that that has a, quite a lot of impact on the return of the signal. Whereas uh, passive microwave re, uh, measurements are far less impacted by that. They're also somewhat impacted, but much less. Um, radar can produce more or less signal from dense vegetation. That really depends on the wavelength, as we'll see. It's got more random noise, um, and um, we'll see some of that in the imagery. It can achieve higher spatial resolution and passive microwave remote sensing because we're, we're providing energy through our, uh, our uh, radar signal. Uh, it's got distortion and shading issues, we'll see those. Um, but one of the really valuable things of radar is it can quite precisely measure topography and high changes uh, 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 using, for instance, interferometry. It can really do that within centimeters or, or even better. All right, so what about the surface roughness and sketching? We spoke about that. So the wavelength of radar will be in the order of centimeters. Uh, and uh, that means that if I have a surface of, uh, of um, uh, roughness in that same order, uh, then uh, I'm, I'm going to, and here's an example of that, I'm going to have quite a different uh, sort of uh, uh, backscatter, as it's called. So uh, the process of, of uh, radar beams being uh, scattered around by the surface is what we call uh, uh, backscatter, that is what we measure back at the um, satellite or the airplane is the backscatter that we've measured. Uh, and so you can see there's quite a difference between a smooth surface where the beam will come at the surface and then be reflected from it uh, as, if, uh, as if it was a mirror, if you like, we call it specular backscatter, and we'll, actually that will show up as black, if you like, or very low signal in your image because very little of that signal comes back um, to, the, to the satellite. Uh, the rougher your um, your material becomes, then the uh, the, the the more uh, multi-directional your scatter will become. So here's a, a slightly smooth surface with uh, you know height variations in the order of maybe one centimeter thereabouts. You see that still most of the radiation is scattered away, but some part of it now comes back. And the rougher it gets, then the more uh, it will start to act as a as a sort of a more homogeneous reflector, and uh, and more of it will come back. To the uh, to the airplane, so that's similar backscattering properties exist for optical wavelengths, but of course because those um, wavelengths are far far shorter, then you don't see that uh, uh, you know being affected as much by by this scale of centimeter variability. Also, depending on the wavelength that you're measuring in, you might see different parts of the vegetation. Uh, or, or the, the vegetation might impact on your returns. So here's a really nice example of that. I think this is, uh, is uh, for, for uh, four bands here. Uh, this picture gives you an impression of what the signal is most affected by. So if you look at a short wavelength, say three centimeter in the X band, and then we see that the canopy really, the leaves and the needles are really interacting with, uh, with the radiation at this wavelength. Whereas if we start looking at longer wavelengths, so 27 meters with the L band, then it's really the branches. And as I go into longer wavelengths again, uh, the P band, uh, really it's the, only the big branches, and in the radio, sort of three meter range, it might only be the uh, actual tree trunk itself that has any effect on the, on the signal, if any. So really, the wavelength and the, the size of the objects uh, are of a, or, uh, that it interferes with, uh, or, or interacts with uh, are of a similar uh, magnitude. Also, I um, want to point out one important effect here of the canopy, which is that it, it can uh, make sh uh, ensure that uh, uh, reflected uh, um, radar signal uh, that would normally have um, been directed away from the sensor, uh, uh, for instance, over a water surface, uh, is actually scattered more and, and, and allows some of it to return back to the sensor. So um, to, to show that example here is we might have uh, a beam uh, coming in uh, through the vegetation. It hits a, a smooth water surface and normally it would be uh, scattered away uh, perhaps uh, like, a, uh, like, like, like a mirror, but because it first then we uh, on the way back hits the vegetation, some of it actually does go back. Uh, to the sensor, and that's uh, what you call the double bounce effect. And we'll see an example of that in later images. Uh, we can also use the backscatter to uh, to look at things like wave height. So <clears throat> again, roughness uh, affects uh, 
determines how much of the radiation goes back towards the, uh, the sensor. And so for a very smooth surface, that would be very little. And if there's very high waves, there'd be a lot of it uh, comparatively being uh, sent back to the, to the sensor. So we can infer things like wave height uh, and, and from that uh, wind speed from uh, radar measurements, which is pretty cool, of course. All right, so now radar imagery is not easy to work with, and, and that's one of the reasons why we're not actually going to uh, work with uh, radar imagery in this course, because there's a lot of um, uh, issues, not only to do with um, uh, noise, uh, the double bounce effect that we talked about, uh, and the surface roughness effects that we talked about, but also geometric distortions. Uh, and those arise because we're collecting data at an angle, and we're basically measuring uh, how long it takes for the signal come back to come back, and from that we infer the um, the distance to the object and and uh, and try to uh, construct an image. And some of those geometric distortions you can see on this image here. So the um, uh, uh, radar instrument would have been in this on the left side of this uh, this, this image here, uh, sending out a signal uh, and then waiting for that to come back. And uh, what you might see here is that it seems that all the slopes facing uh, to, to the right seem to be very bright, you know, very white, uh, and then uh, all the slopes facing uh, to the to the to the right side of the image seem very dark uh, and uh, and uh, in, in shadow, and sometimes it doesn't seem to be any returns at all. And that's in fact indeed the case. And to understand why that is the case, we can look at this uh, image here. And so. Um, uh, it all has to do with uh, a radar shadow and layover effect. So uh, remember that the uh, aircraft in this case sends out a pulse of radar uh, and then that propagates you know, according to a front like that uh, and starts returning <coughs> from this, this mountain here. Now remember if that mountain wasn't there it would have gone back you know, down to the surface like that and then returned it. And now returns earlier uh, than expected which makes uh, on an image makes it look it is actually closer to the aircraft uh, uh, than it was in reality. In other words, in this image it is uh, moved to the left, uh, if you like, compared to its uh, uh, real lo location. On the other hand, uh, uh, of course the reverse is true if there's a slope. So here's a particular case where most of the signal uh, uh, hits this side of the uh, of the hill at the same time it returns and so you see almost a very narrow like you see here <coughs> return very narrow feature on the imagery and then a big black shadow uh, because at this point there's nothing returning until the beam hits the surface here and then can can start uh, backscattering again and that's what we see here so we see these black slopes uh, which are basically ra radar shadows and and so the uh, radar facing slopes appear shorter then they are, and the, and the slopes facing away from the radar appear longer, and that's what foreshortening. And that's, as you can see, that's a pretty strong sort of deformation in the imagery, which makes it quite a challenge, uh, depending on uh, on the landscape you're looking at, of course, but can make it quite a challenge to analyze the imagery. Okay, well, that was the um, first video on uh, on radar, uh, and then in the next video, uh, we're going to look at some of the applications.